Hi, Parix fans. You back here with Wayne, and uh, we are in the Old Fort Chapel. A moment you guys have all been waiting for. So, anyway, we've got JD, JD uh, Jack Daniels. Okay, so we got JD here with us. Uh, he runs the whole show here, and um, he's going to tell us a little bit about the Old Fort Chapel. He knows quite a bit of the history and. Uh, also, just give us a little bit of a rundown as to what he does here. So, JD, um, oh, good, good morning to everybody, and uh, thank you for this opportunity that we've got here. Yeah, my name is JD. Um, I'm the resident minister and caretaker at the Old Fort Chapel. Uh, Old Fort Chapel is around about about 150 years old, and we still use it currently as a wedding venue. We we are busy almost every weekend. It's also an internationally recognised heritage site. Uh, therefore there's a lot of old stuff, the old history of when the British was based here and there's some of the stuff that they used here is still here and original and we try and keep it as original as possible. And then uh, obviously this place here was a this armory. This was originally built as an armory, they kept the explosions and stuff here and eventually when they made peace they changed it into a chapel in 1856. Cool. What do you do here? What, what services do you offer? Uh, weddings, uh, funerals, uh, dedications, uh, that's basically what we do. We don't do any services in the chapel itself. We do that and everything that we make is to maintain the place and to look after the place and to try and keep it in the condition that it is in. Uh, as well as with the, the residents that live on site here as well, it's just a few selected people that live here that's got something to do with the history behind the Old Fort or behind Durban Light Infantry that's still involved with stuff like that. And it is very interesting to meet these old gentlemen uh, from the things that they've been through in their lives. And they now live here on the property and every now and then we would make jokes of saying, you know, the, the watering can fell off on the veranda or, or, or a lady heard footsteps on her floor. And it's always this random joke that everybody don't really know, but uh, surely there should be, when there's smoke, there's fire. But that's up to you guys. Alright, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming here this evening, we're going to arrive at about 9pm and we are going to be here until 4 or past 4 the next morning. So it's going to be a very interesting evening. Um, JD, what do you think we are in for? What stories have you heard about the place? Well, uh, I mean, you've been around. My one night shift security guard came to me one day and he, he complained about it. His patrols that he have to do, and I ask him, but why? He says, no, man. You know, I can hear a noise. I can hear people parking. There's a commotion going on there, close to the gate. But when I go there, there's no one there. There's absolutely nothing there. There's just the trees and the bushes. And, and yeah, so he's pretty freaked out. He's scared to come here completely. Um, a lot of that has been in our time has has had their stories and their scares and their little cold feelings down the back and things like that. And uh, each one to their own. And let them believe what they need to believe. Okay, cool. So, you know, I feel that with the history that comes with this place, you know, obviously uh, around the chapel, uh, people have been putting their ashes. Yeah, they come and scatter their ashes and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you've got ashes, yeah, you've got all that history attached to the place. Um, I mean, this is also, this is also uh, attached to that Grosvenor, Grosvenor ship that went down. The Grosvenor ship, we've yeah. got parts of it here, we've got some of the gun pieces here, yeah. Okay, so, you know, you've got, they've got one of the cannons in the yard here um, that came from that ship, and apparently they lost quite a few souls on that ship. Um, there were quite a few people that survived the initial sinking, but uh, on their way making it to, I think, Cape, mm -hmm. they were on their way to, I'm not too sure you can always comment on that and, and rectify me if I'm wrong. Um, out of, I think, about 70 odd people or so that made, made it through the actual wreck, um, only a couple survived, you know. But, you know, when it comes to, like, the cannon that uh, has been recovered and all the rest of it from the actual Grosvenor, those type of items act, act as a conduit to the paranormal side of the universe, you know, to that other dimension. That's how a lot of the spirits manage to attach themselves to certain items and uh, manage to linger as such, if you know what I'm saying. You know, and then you've also got all these clocks and things like that in remembrance of so and so and so and so. 
So everything is either a conduit or, or, or an attachment. I've got, I've got maybe a hint now. Okay. Off the Grosvenor, we've got some of the guns here, yes. We've also got one of the benches that they had on deck. One of the benches that was on the deck of that boat, we've got standing here as well. I have to chain it down because of we in Durban Central. But I've got the original seat here from the Grosvenor as well that was on the deck with all the chaos that went on there. Oh, wow. Okay, so obviously he's going to show me exactly where that bench is and then we'll put that into our investigation later this evening and um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna we're gonna be finding some weird stuff and the worst part of all of this is if the paranormal shit hits the fan <laughs> we can't leave until after four so we stuck with it yeah <laughs> don't laugh enjoy guys <laughs> have a good one and uh, yeah, I'll be safe and listen it was absolutely awesome meeting you and thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity and uh, JD has also probably managed to hook us up with the old fort, what is it called? Old fort... Warriors Gate. Warriors, Warriors Gate, Gate Museum, Military Museum on the same premises as well. A lot of history there. Uh, there is some authorization that's needed, so we'll see what's happening with that. Yeah, yeah so if we, if we can get that authorization through, then we'll be doing that one as well. So stay tuned. This is just part one. This is the interview with JD, the supervisor of the old Fort Chapel and the garden area and um, we'll see you guys later.